deck the halls on this special episode. The Mythbusters are cracking open holiday myths. Can turkeys explode? Turkey master, I hand you your bird. Will a spoon keep champagne fizzy? It's like drinking stars. Are there killer icicles? Oh, wow. Who are the Mythbusters? Adam Savage. I reject your reality and substitute my own. And Jamie Heineman. I kind of like it in here. It's private. Between them, more than 30 years special effects experience. That was intense. They don't just tell the myths. They put them to the test. Man, Jamie, it snowed like crazy out here last night. Yeah, this is how it snows in San Francisco, in plastic bags. <laughs> We've got to take a look at the myth of whether or not a clothed snowman melts slower than a naked snowman. Can we show a naked snowman on television? This is a family show. Maybe we'll put a fig leaf. At any rate, let's just get started making some snowmen. Just remember everyone, we're working in a really cold environment, so if your fingers start to lose feeling, make sure you go inside and get a cup of tea or something. That would be Adam's untrimmed nose hair. All right, so what does it say? 80 degrees. 80 degrees out here, San Francisco summer. Let's start the timer. Okay. And go! All right, so a check in on our snowman. Let's see here. That looks a lot more intact than yours does. Yeah, I mean, mine's just completely collapsing. It was just as big as yours when we started. We've been going for a couple of hours now. It looks like yours is starting to lean over. I think it's gonna crumble any minute now. Let's just give them a little bit longer and then we'll see what happens. This one's a classic holiday myth. It's the idea that a silver spoon put in the neck of an open bottle of champagne will actually keep it bubblier than any other method. So it looks like we need to leave one alone as the control, right? Exactly. Then the other one will have the silver spoon hung in it. Right. Right. One that's left open without anything on it. Correct. And then one that we've taken the cork out and put it back. Yes. Yeah. Ooh, I'm feeling a little lightheaded already. It's like drinking stars. So we have our control, the silver spoon, the open bottle, and the recorked bottle. Okay. All right, so we'll check them out tomorrow and see which one remained the bubbliest. Well, Adam, it's been five hours and 40 minutes out here. The snowmen have been merrily melting away. Yeah. What do you think? Well, on the surface of it, without undressing your snowman, I think that the myth is completely confirmed. A dressed snowman is melting a lot slower than a naked snowman. It's like keeping it in a cooler. Yeah, absolutely. Look at that. Barely melted at all. You can see it melted a lot more where there wasn't a coat. Mm. Wow. All right, well, it's been 24 hours. Our champagne has been sitting in the fridge. Well, let's pull it out, see what it tastes like. All right. The guys do a blind taste test to individually rate the fizziness of each bottle. See how we did? Maybe it's the holiday spirit, but for once they agree. Both ranking the glasses in exactly the same order. <laughs> J3, J4. Okay, now for the real test. Let's peel the stickers off and see what we got. All right, let's start from least bubbliest. Ah, ha, 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 ha. 
Silver Spoon was the least bubbliest. Open bottle. Yep. And that one would be the corked. Whoa! For some reason, we thought the control bottle was not as fizzy as the recorked bottle. I think pretty handily we struck down the silver spoon as a uh, preservative for bubbliness. Well, that's another Christmas myth. Up the chimney. So Adam, what's our next Christmas myth? Uh, this next myth is based on the idea that it could be so cold outside that if you went outside and had a wee, your urine would freeze before it ever hit the ground. And we've built this little freezer where it's actually like 70 below zero. It's right off the scale. Yeah. Well, the coldest ever recorded in the continental United States was in Montana in 1954, and it was 69.7 degrees below zero. Well, that means our freezer here is right on target, and I've got my fake peeing rig here. All right, Jimmy, I don't think I can hold on anymore. <laughs> you ready to try? Yeah. Okay. Take the hemo off there. Let's see. And... It's not freezing. And we know from the thermometer that right about here, it's at 70 below zero. I don't know what it would take to make your urine freeze, but it's not gonna happen in the United States, that's for sure. You know, I think this is fairly straightforward. I'd agree with you. Jimmy, are there no end to these crazy Christmas myths? I mean, what could possibly be next? Well, we have one of those freak occurrences, and that is, what if an icicle fell off the eave of your house, and this icicle falls down and pierces you on the heart? Would it, like, stab you and kill you? I'm a little dubious about that, but obviously I guess the first place to start would be to be making some mighty big icicles. Funny you should mention that, because I happen to have some mighty big icicles ready to go right here. Lovely. The Mythbusters stairwell will be the scene of this unlikely holiday catastrophe. Fifteen feet of tube will guide the killer icicle, and a nice piece of beef will play victim. You ready, Jimmy? Ready. On my count? Okay. Five, four, three, two, one. Whoa! <laughs> Dude. <laughs> that is really gnarly. That was a perfect dead center landing. <laughs> that looks kind of deadly, doesn't it? If you take away all the other stuff, like it's probably not going to fall correctly and all that stuff, a reasonably sized icicle can be deadly. It worked first time, like a charm. A turkey and your fire suit at the same time. Well, there's a popular holiday tradition in the South that involves deep frying turkeys. Mm -hmm. And apparently, if you drop the turkey in too fast, it'll explode. Oh, explosions. Turkey master. I hand you your bird. According to the myth, the problems happen when the turkey is still frozen. So, as a comparison, they'll start with a thawed one. Three, two, one! No exploding turkey. Now, how about a frozen one? Three, two, one! Go! Yeah! Okay, that would be bad. Boiling oil all over your kitchen and stuff like that. It still wasn't an explosion, though. It was dangerous, to be sure, but like I said, we had no explosions, and that was no explosion. Merry Christmas, Adam. Merry Christmas, Jamie. Well, what's our next Christmas myth? The next myth is that lighting a fire in your house will actually make your house colder. Because while it heats up the area around the fire, it's drawing heat up the chimney and making the outlying rooms colder. Well, we just started a fire and we've got thermometers staged around the house. Hey, it went down. Jamie, the thermometer in the other room went down by almost three degrees. Cool, well, the air's gotta come from somewhere. Yeah, so, I mean, let's check out the kitchen. The kitchen's not much changed, but it's pretty actually 
you know, open to the living room, but in the outlying areas, it actually went down by three degrees. Well, you know, I was actually afraid that in California it's too warm. I mean, outside it's only 55 degrees. I was afraid we wouldn't be able to actually prove it here. We'd have to go somewhere where it's snowing. But uh, this myth is confirmed. Yeah. Well, that was cool. Well, Adam, I've got a Christmas present for you. Oh, Jamie, thank you. <laughs> you shouldn't have, but I actually got you something, too. Oh, Thanks. well, here you go. Why, right, thank you. Oh, wow. <laughs> a laser bench focusing array? How did you know? It's just one of those things that when I saw it, I knew you'd want it. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> oh, mustache trimmer. Are you trying to tell me something? Yeah, you just take it all off. Go ahead. <laughs> I don't think they'd let me do that. <laughs> this is cool.